Welcome to Dan's Talks. My guest today is Zach Erdem, who is a restaurateur in the Hamptons, who is quite prominently known for a wide variety of things. Uh, he started a second restaurant and other restaurants, and he's uh, on the other end of this call. And welcome to the welcome to the podcast, Zach. Hi, Dan. Great seeing you. Thanks for having me today. I'm happy to join your podcast. I've been listening to you all the time, and I've been very big fan of your paper that you created over the years ago. I love Dan's paper. It looks like Hampton Staple thing. Without Dan's, it's like there's no week goes through. <laughs> well, uh, without uh, without your uh, restaurant on Main Street, uh, 75 Main, um, it wouldn't be the same place. I re By the way, I remember that place... Um, so many years ago, it was an Irish bar. Did you hear, ever hear about it? I, I heard about that. There was uh, yeah. many stories it about a, it. The place it had, been there yeah, it had, a, it had a big um, sort of a neon sign up top. And uh, two drunks once. I, <laughs> and by this time, it had closed and reopened as a French gay bar with balloons. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, the, I never I was, heard about I that. I was on the street. I was on the street. And the two of them stopped and looked at the sign. And then they looked, up, and then they looked inside and they said, what happened? <laughs> but that was a long time ago. When, I wasn't when, even probably born then. <laughs> when, did, when did 75 Main's been around a while? How long? When did you first start it? Then it's um, 2002 when I arrived to America. And so I was looking for, I was looking for a place to stay. I was looking for, like, I was like born. So I had no clue about in America. I had no English. I had no friends. I had no, nothing like that I can use as a tool. Where'd you come from? I, I'm from Turkey. So I came 2002 and looked around to find a place to work, like, create my living and it was kind of quite really difficult in Manhattan and someone told me that I should go to Hamptons they have better people there nice people you might find a job and basically start your life there and I did I did go to Hamptons I remember the Hampton Jutney bus got on the bus and end up on uh, Southampton then I went to the main street all the way down then walked to the beach and then I stayed at the beach a couple of hours then came back to Main Street. Then I was looking for a McDonald's to get some food or something to eat. I can afford only McDonald's back then, so I didn't have anything else. Um, there was no McDonald's on Main Street, so only place that I was like going crazy for. It was 75 Main. It was a big variety of doors were open. Everyone was having a beautiful meal there. I walked in the place and went to Bar Street, and I told the bartender how much it cost, Diet Coke and a burger. So he was like, uh, started laughing at me. I'm like, well, I would like to know. And I brought my, I, that was probably then, it was my first time eating in the restaurants, to be honest, in America. Mm. I did not go any restaurants back then. I didn't have any money, anything. So it was the first restaurant, professional restaurant that I walked in. There was 75 Main. To, the reason that I went there, I was looking for the McDonald's, but there was no McDonald's on Main Street back then. <laughs> so I, Asked the manager or the bartender how much it cost Diet Coke and uh, the burger. The guy was uh, smi he smiled and I was like, listen, don't worry about it. Have a sit. Oh. I'll get you burger and Diet Coke. My Diet Coke came. I was drinking it, refilled it. And another one, and I, I probably had three Diet Cokes back then. And uh, the burger came. Then I was trying to explain to him that I was looking for a job. He was like, oh, I kind of figured out that you don't have money stuff. He said, give me a couple of minutes. Let me talk to my boss. And I don't know if you remember June Spire. June was the lady back then, owner of 75 Main. Yes, I remember now. Dr. June. So he called her and then she came in. I was sitting on one side of the bar. And uh, so the lady came in back then and she was sitting across to me and watching me like nonstop and smiling. And I kind of like, why is she watching me? And I smiled back. So I was like, well, it looks like some nice old lady. Ten minutes later, when I finished my burger, I was just 
talk, trying to talk to the bartender. And he was like, I have a good news for you. I said, what is it? I thought it was going to be a free meal. <laughs> and he wasn't going to charge because he knew I didn't have much money. And he was like, no, the lady was across to you that watched me and smiled in the last 10 minutes. That was the boss. And she really, she really wants you to work here as a bartender. Oh. She thinks you're really handsome. And I think it will be really good for our bar. I think you're going to be making so much money here. And I'm like, what is bartending job? What, do you, what am I going to do? I have no clue about drinks and wines and the food or anything. I, this guy, I was like, there is no way I can do this job. Can you let me go to the kitchen and wash the dishes? While she liked me, I think she will give me a job. I was thinking like she's going to probably give me the dishwasher job. He was like, no, um, you're really very handsome boy. And I think it's going to be good for bar. We'll teach you everything. And the boss wants you to be bartender, not dishwasher. I refused him and I walked and I said, do I have a job? He was like, yeah. He's like, okay, I'm going back to the kitchen. And I went to start washing the dishes. Then that guy was washing dishes there. He became a solid person. So I took his job. That was, his name was Santiago. I took his job as a dishwasher. So they promote him as a salad, like became a like, salad person. He started making salads. And that guy, Diego, still works in my restaurant as a salad <laughs> person after 20 some years. So the guy remembers me when I came back 2010 to bought the restaurant. He was like, I know this effing guy. He was a dishwasher here. He is not an owner. <laughs> he didn't believe that I was, I was the new owner 75 made. I'm like, Diego, we wash the dishes together. Why are you saying that? I bought this place. Now I own the restaurant. And he was like, no, F, no. I'm like, I swear, Diego, I own this place now. So all those people that when I walked in, it was May 2010, and I walked straight to the kitchen. I said, guys, I'm the new owner of the 75 main. I'm not going to fire any one of you guys. I want everybody to stay with me. I will get everything ready. Let's work together. Bring your kids. Bring everybody. Help me clean up this place. Let's open up as soon as possible. Everyone, whoever worked there before, they all came to help me. And um, we basically did everything by the scratch then. I had no money to fix the floor or fix the bathrooms. As you know, the 75 main bathrooms, probably the most disgusting bathroom in the world. Yeah. So it's a little place that you walk in, you have people pee not next to you, the other one washing hand and the other says another one. It was really kind of set up, very disgusting. But I couldn't do anything. I had no money to fix the place. How did you come um, to get the restaurant? Well, I, I work for Nello's. Have you, do you remember Nello's restaurant? It rings a bell. Yes, I do. It was in the post house. Yes, that's my restaurant as well now. So I work for Nello. Um, since As soon as I left 75 Main, they were like talking about Nello is opening in the Hamptons. Nello is going to be doing this. And the girls were like talking about it, very highly about it. I'm like, okay, I'll go ask for a job. I went to meeting with the general manager. And I walked in. You know, there's a big patio. I walked in. There was a one guy sitting on the left side. There's four or five beautiful bottle of rosé, ice, and some food on the table by himself, loud music. And he's screaming at me, I'm like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm looking for Andre, and I have a job interview. I have 15 minutes. He said, come over here. Andre is not here. Let me talk to you. And I was kind of like, who the f this guy is? Like, It's like almost uh, 2 o'clock, and he's drunk as hell. His face is all red. It was classic Nello. So he's like, uh, you know, we started talking. I told him that I was a dishwasher. I have a 15 minutes break. I have to go back to my job. This word that I said, I'm responsible for my job. I have to go back in 15 minutes. Nello was like, I have to hire this guy. He told me all the story when he hired me. He was like, remember you told me you were like, I'm responsible for my job for 15 minutes break I have. I have to go back, wash my, wash my dishes. So that made Nello that like, I have to have this guy in my restaurant. If this guy is responsible for the washing dishes, 15 minutes break, and he really wants to go back, this guy is a real deal. So he was chasing me. And the same day, drunk Nello walks to 75 main asking for me. Everyone was like, why well, he's in the back in the kitchen? He's in the back. He sits in the bar, waits for me to come out to just say hi, or he wants to take me to his restaurant. I kind of like work. I didn't come in the front of the house. And next day, and then I got this hostess comes to me. was like, 
Zach, there was a guy named is Nello or something. It might be a fake phone call, but he's calling you, which I never, ever get a phone call at 75 main restaurant under my name. I kind of find like I came with my dirty uniform and the back in the dishwasher and I came and pick up the phone and it was like, Zach, it's Nello. Come over. Like I start <laughs> like this. I'll wait for you 10 minutes immediately. I get up and I went back to the kitchen. I told the manager, I want a 10 minute break. He was like, yeah, go half an hour. Don't worry about it. I went Nello's and I started talking to him. Then he was like, when he found out I was Turkish, he was like, oh, my wife is Turkish. So he calls his wife, she was at the beach, come immediately, I want you to meet this guy. So she comes right away and then we sit down. Half an hour, we had the best conversation and she was explaining my situation. And Nello, you know, I didn't speak English while I was back in the kitchen, didn't any understand what he was saying. So she explained to me in Turkish and everything. And we had the clear picture. I'm like, okay, this is great. I went back 75 main. I told Nell, I will give them my two weeks notice. I don't want to leave them that way. It was like, are you kidding me? You said dishwasher. Nobody gives a shit about dishwasher. Just walk away. I said, no, I'm responsible. I'm going to give them two weeks. They were so good to me. They gave me a chance to live, play everything. So he was basically like, no, you're a dishwasher. Don't worry about it. I'm like, no. Then when I went back 75 main, they were like very upset when I told them I was going to leave. They were like, no, we have better plan for you. We're going to make you bartender. Now you speak English at least a little bit. Now you know place. So they were begging me not to leave. I was like, I kept a couple of days, 75 main. And then I went to Nello's because everyone was talking about it. It was going to be better future. That's how I started. And then at Nello, I worked for Nello eight years in Madison Avenue and Hampton store. Then I got fired 2010 uh, by Nello's partner, Mr. Marcos. And uh, he was, I mean, he was a Greek businessman. Somehow he didn't like me and he wanted to get rid of me. He did. But then uh, when I came back to the Hamptons, 2010, and it was, I think, end of the April, I called June. At first I texted her. I said, hey, do you remember me? I was your son. And I sent a text message to her. The 75 meme clo was closed back then. She called me immediately crying. And then on the same day, on seven hours or maybe more, I was on the phone with her, getting all the paperwork and everything ready, signing the lease, signing her, taking over her lease and everything. I oh. sent her $15,000, the money that I have left over. I didn't have anything. <laughs> I was making sure that she knows I'm serious. I took over 75 million over seven hours phone call. I made her flew next morning to the ICE airport, meet my attorney, sign all the legal papers. My attorney started doing all the legal paperwork and everything, DBA and everything. I will say over 24 hours, I became owner of 75 million. I had no clue that, look, listen, then we all, you know, get in the business, but you get in the business, this, as you basically, I grow up. It, it gave me so much like chills. Like I'm like, is it real true? It's Am I in dream? Like, I, I own this place now. And I remember one day we were so busy. We were packed as hell. There was a line to get in. I walked across the street in front of the chamber. There was a nice bench. I sit down there. Then I cried. I watched these people. I'm like, is it for <laughs> real? I was pinching myself. Is it for real? I own this place. Look at all those people. Who is these people? Where are they coming from? Whole thing changed. My whole my life changed. Immediately after I got fired, I became a very successful, you know, the Southampton I loved more than anything else in the world. It became my favorite place in the world and um, gave me the life. Otherwise, I was going back to Turkey. After that visit, I went to, you know, go to the beach and relax a little bit in the Hamptons. After that visit, I was going back to Turkey. Where did you grow up in Turkey? I was... Uh, I was um, I was born in eastern Turkey, very close to like uh, border Armenia and all those. Then the mountain. So near the Kurdish area. A uh, little bit above the Kurdish area, but close. We are like there was a couple yes places very close to the Kurd. I'm not a Kurdish, mm -hmm. um, but uh, there is a lot of uh, the all the way east. We're close to kind of like Russia. Like you basically go to Gurdjistan, like two hours driving from my uh, my city. Very close. And the winter is there like 20 feet snow. Then we lived in mountain. So there was no way to go in the city or anywhere else. So you it was... to America, quick. 
2002, it was my dream. I found a one paper when I was a shepherd in a mountain back in Turkey. It was, uh, I don't even know. I was like 11 year old. I found a piece of paper by railroad and there was all beautiful New York City pictures on it, all the buildings and a light up. I didn't know what that is. We were living in the cave. I had no clue what this is. <laughs> I never seen those pictures. And then took it as, it was my dream to be there and immediately. I showed my mom. My mom was like, no, these are all fake. How do you think this is going to build these people? This is bullshit. Don't even throw in the garbage. I'm like, no, mom, I want to go here. I oh. saved that paper until that paper it died itself in my pocket years, over the years. I was watching that paper every day. I want to go here. I want to go here. When I was 18, then I was like, it's enough. I don't want to be shepherd anymore. I ran from this uh, Turkey. I got on the train. I had no money to get on train. I hide myself in the train and the, above all those suitcase people put it there. So I made sure nobody sees me. When they, the guy who comes checks your uh, ticket, I was going up there and hiding myself my, under, behind the suitcases. So I went all the way to the Istanbul, three days, train with train. So I made sure no one sees me, that I had no money. They will throw me out from somewhere if they catch me. And I made it. I made Istanbul. And then I get out of from the train. There was my brother used to live in the very, very like bad area in Istanbul. I called him. Um, I said, I'm in Istanbul and Haidar Pasha Garu is too far from my brother. He said he has no money, he has no car to come and get me. He said, trying to come over here. So how do I get there? What do you call that? The car high uh, check stuff? That, you know, you go down the street and just trying to stop the cars and take you wherever they go. So I get in the car and uh, made it uh, two days from uh, where I ended up at the train to get to my brother's place. It took two days for me to uh, make it there. And then my brother was living in the place that he was. He used to work on the basement, that, that kind of like uh, kind of like storage place. So he put me in little boxes there. He said, "There's a space you can just create bed for yourself." And then I stay with him. Then I was dying to go to school, university. Then I got an university close by this move. And that was it. And then I got a student visa to America and uh, jump on the plane one way. And that was it. <laughs> why, why, do you, why do you think everybody loves to come to 75 May? Well, summer is gorgeous in the Hamptons then. Everyone loves the Hamptons in the gorgeous. But winter is another winter wonderland. It's beautiful, quiet. You still have a nice you know, fresh breeze and people are nice, restaurants are open and it's uh, gorgeous being there. Like, you know, it's a different environment. You don't expect the thousands of people, but we got quite a lot of people all over the place. This is also, I don't know if you're aware of it. I have my TV show now um, called Sir in the Hamptons. It's a reality show. We started filming in 2021 and the first season was in Discovery Plus. They loved it very much. They moved to HBO Max. Now we're on HBO Max. And uh, second season actually is coming on air on uh, um, September. Okay. I'm sorry, September. Uh, second season is going to be on uh, February 2nd, next week, Friday. Coming up. What's it's, it called? It, it's called Serving the Hamptons, Then It's in, um, basically it's not about me and my restaurants. It's about all Hamptons, Montauk, Bridgehampton, um actually we did a nice party for dance you must watch it you will see which wiki is there we did an um we filmed one of your um power list we did your power we filmed the whole uh story it's on one episode it's just a dance power list we, oh. we we did really good with that actually it was incredible they did that in the georgios in um bed in harlow i think the golf place yes it, it was uh... incredible so it's called Serving the Hamptons, and you can stream it on HBO Max next week. Next week on Friday, yes. And uh, is it will be available after that? It will be available, yes. You know, lot like those uh, streaming net platforms. You can go anytime you want to yeah. watch it. It will be there forever, so you can it's like watch this it. Podcast. It's like this podcast. Yes, exactly. It's like <laughs> this podcast forever. This is uh, this is very exciting, Dan. You know, everyone is talking about the Hamptons. How do we bring more people to Hamptons? How do we make this Hampton much much better in the winter time? Like Southampton has a new mayor. He's a great guy, a new administration. Love them very much. And you know, we had a meeting. We we're talking about it. It's good that he comes. Ask you how we how we make the village better in the winter. 
how we bring more people. So this show, I think, look, HBO Max has 95 million subscribers. It's a big deal then. It will be million people is watching, not just 75 million, not just Zach's places. It's all the Hamptons. We are all over the Hamptons. We film all over the beautiful beaches, all the nice wineries. So we try to show as much as possible good stuff around the Hamptons. So the, why people want to come to Hamptons, watch the show, see the, all the beautiful places. I think the HBO did a great job at the second season. I think everyone is going to love it. And it will be the, of course, it's a reality show. Lots of drama, lots of, you know, fights and all stuff. But there is a lot of beautiful places to see and find out what you can do in the Hamptons, even the off season. Um, there is, I have a question to ask you. It's my last question. How long did it take to put the lights up on the tree out front of your restaurant? <laughs> I did I did have my own with all those my staff members and we didn't have those big what do you call that uh, the letters then I did go all the, I'm the skinniest one in my team I was the one go all the way in the up to the tree all the little <laughs> little areas to put that tree it took me all, over a week and it's still there that when we light it it's a shine up nice I, I'm sure you've seen it oh it's, it's gorgeous tree. So, and the much, <laughs> much many other trees have gone up since I think yours was the first you see them in places like Palm Beach or Palo Alto lining the street. Correct. Southampton too. Southampton too, little beautiful trees. Now next year I'm gonna make much better. Now you remind me, I promise next year I will make you will see. When you walk in the Hamptons, the first thing you'll see my tree. I'll make it much better. <laughs> Zach, thank you so much for being on the podcast and and I love you. I know you so long, and um, I'm glad to be in this podcast. And I hope to see you in the Amin. Okay, I'll come by. Talk to you soon. We'll have lunch one day. Okay, bye bye. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. <laughs>